What's up guys, the mighty Lou Boo here. Now, man, I wanted to make this video a while back, maybe like, I don't know, like two or three days after the expansion came out. But uh, anyway, better late than never. I wanted to talk about which legendaries are worth crafting this expansion because, uh, you know, it's kind of helpful. I guess to we'll have a video like this out. Um, I guess we'll go left and right. Uh, just to give you my opinion why some of these cards are good or bad or why I don't see play. Uh, anyway, let's start from left to right. The Star Reader Stella. When I saw this card, I was like, oh, so good is a plus one. But you're playing Runecraft. You don't need this kind of effect, which is basically giving you a plus one. It gives you another minion to your hand, right? But when you're playing Runecraft, for example, you're playing Earth, right? You're trying to burst your opponent down. You don't really care having a, another minion. You want to have uh, your effects trigger. You want to put down your Earth Rights effect. You want to burst your opponent down. Having an extra card in your hand is nothing. It's not very useful. And uh, yeah, that's basically what she doesn't really see play. It doesn't really fit into many of the Runecraft uh, style decks. Uh, it doesn't fit into a Dimension Shift. It doesn't fit into Earth Right. And heck, even if you're playing like neutral Runecraft, it's not really worth crafting. Like I wouldn't want to have this. Her her defense also another reason why she's kind of bad. Even though she does go plus one, maybe she was a two two, maybe kind of too strong because she probably uh, three for ones. But heck, even then, you still probably wouldn't play her just because Runecraft does not play this style of of uh, deck, or this style of deck is not very good, I guess. Trying to outvalue your opponent down. Um, the Mars. The Mars Silent Flame General East. Um, because of how strong aggro is right now, this uh, this legendary just doesn't see play. Maybe if they nerfed down some of the aggro right now, then she might see some more play. But the best combo I could come up with her is to play this with uh, Romeo and Juliet, the round table, right? Not, well, not Romeo and Juliet, but you have the round table and then you play this in the White Paladin. And then you can just protect your Flame General. You know, get get her effects snowballing, but just because how strong aggro is right now, yeah, she doesn't really see much play. Uh, if any, I, I don't think you even play her. Not worth crafting, in my opinion. So yeah, that's why these two are not good right now. The Prime Dragon Keeper, the OP car of the expansion, it's uh, so strong, right? You play this dragon plays it once their overflow is active, and she cannot be attacked once overflow is active. And not only that, but she deals two damage to a random enemy minion and then one to the enemy leader. It's really freaking strong, man. She has a huge body. Look, look at this. She's huge. She's either a 1 5 that can't be targeted or she becomes a 3 7 that can be targeted by uh, minions. So, yeah, that's, she's really huge, really strong, really powerful. And, I mean, it's kind of nice because it did enable a new style of dex, which is not just. Dropping Bahamut and and combo your opponent down with the Sea Queen, but it's still fairly similar. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's just it. The Twilight Queen, the only uh, deck that I've seen this run is the Nemphis deck. So you really like Nemphis? It's not necessary, but it's kind of nice having this effect where it triggers your last words twice. If you're not really playing an Nemphis deck, it's not really worth running because on turn 4 you can just play your healing girl and uh, keep yourself alive. You have better choices to run if you're playing uh, anything else. Heck, even in a Nemphis deck, you're probably going to want to play a healing card. Uh, the healing girl. Man, I don't even know her name, but you guys know if you play in Nemphis, uh, you play a lot of Shadow right now. Uh, let me just find this so just so... We are clear over here, right? We want to give the right information. The series of the night. Yeah, this is your healing card right here, right? Deals two damage to enemy follower, and then restores two healing. So you'd rather play this than that legendary. It's much more useful. So, yeah, that's why that card doesn't really see that much play. I have really seen it. But, uh, yep. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. Medusa now this lovely girl here now she's worth running even though her second effect is pretty pointless of get becoming Medusina if both of your snakes are alive it's just that her the chance of this happening 
are ex impossible. It's like 1% chance the opponent is not going to be able to remove one of these serpents. The serpents are 1-1s, one -ones, so if your opponent does not remove the 1-1 one -one or Medusa, then she becomes Medusina, but yeah, right. Anyway, you're not playing it for this effect, you're playing it for the, uh, the her body. Right, she gives you the the serpents, and she gives and she's a five five. You're basically able to keep putting on the pressure. So she's weak to AOE. So if your opponent has the kind uh, like a dragon, <coughs> not the dragon, that line. If you're going against Aven, <coughs> just hope your opponent doesn't have uh, a lot of board clears. <coughs> if they don't have board clears, then yeah, she's really good. Yeah, she fits into like a Vania deck with plain bats and just swarming the board down. Um, Barbarossa. Definitely not worth crafting. Swordcraft is not. It's not really about having infinite value, right? Because that's what this guy is. He goes back to your hand every time he dies. But this is, yeah, this is not good just because Swordcraft is trying to burst you down, not have infinite value. Um, Cassiopeia, the lovely. It's like Will of the Hunt, Will of the Forest, with a nice booty. Anyways, but yeah, she's a nice body and she does massive damage. She's a board clear, right? A board clear with a body is nice. Um, Jarmun Gun. Um, this is very specific. Just like Medusa, Medusa fits in a very aggressive deck where you have your one drops, your bats, you're flooding the board. Jarmun Gun is kind of different where you're trying to hurt yourself and hurt your opponent. You're playing those demonic rams so that every time you heal, uh, you hurt yourself, you heal yourself. So. Even when you hurt yourself with like a spell, you don't have the mana cram, that damage is also going to go to your opponent. So, yeah, he's very good at closing out games, I guess. Um, over time. Not necessary, just a good uh, minion, good legendary. Nah, yeah, that's all I can say about him. Just a good legendary, you can make a nice deck around. Um, Aether of the White Wings is also a very good legendary that enable Haven just to have some protection against aggro decks which are you know haven are now playing wards which are humongous right you have your right, so let's look for it right away so you guys can know exactly which car synergizes with the the new legendary your cleric lancer now this girl's gonna be huge if you play the your legendary on turn six you can just evolve this and she's gonna be a three nine that is humongous if you play this against aggro if they don't have Dance of Death, they're just not going to get through. You're just going to block so much damage that you're going to be able to heal afterwards. So, yeah, it's very good at stopping aggro decks down on their tracks. Especially if they don't have Dance of Death. If they do, then let's just hope that you still have some healing or some life left to work with. Alright, so next up, let's go for the... Let's see, what do we have? The Zodiac Demon. I've seen this guy in ranked but very few times and it doesn't really work it doesn't I don't like his combination where basically he puts down a minion and he kills it and then he deals damage to the enemy leader if there are no any uh, minions in play I don't know too specific combo the only combo I've seen is uh, with the heresy avatar they play this and then they kill their avatar I don't like very specific combos like this it's not my style of deck, but I've not seen this much play in ladder. It's overall wooden craft this not worth your dust or your vial, I guess. Um for the mail of obliteration, this is another card that's for shadow, but it's not good. It's just a minion with a big uh big stats. It doesn't do anything. That's all it is, a minion with big stats. On turn seven you're much better off playing Kawi because it kills off a minion and it heals you. And uh, it's just much better than this. There's so many better options than this card. This card is so, so bad, man. It's ridiculous. It feels like a bronze card. I don't know why this is a legendary. Well, anyways, the Heresy Avatar, we kind of talk about this with this. Very specific. I don't really like this combo. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a must. I, I wouldn't craft this. There's You have better options. Uh, you could play a Storm deck. Or you could play a Haven deck. Uh, this is very specific to a certain style, but it's too gimmicky. You need certain card combinations, in my opinion, for that to work. Loki, uh, these are 
This is a bad legendary in my opinion. It doesn't really see any play. Especially because the turn you play it doesn't do anything. Um, his stats are pretty pathetic. A 5-5 five, five on turn 8 that does nothing. It just makes your turn 9 be really good. But other than that it's just bad. Uh, you have much better options. Uh, since that's just a, or you could save well, a lot of these minions. You have better options. It doesn't do anything to turn your play. It, and it feels like a win more card. If you're gonna play one more card, there are probably better choices. Um, the Giant Chimera. Sim it, the only play that I've seen this is in uh, Dimension Shift decks where they just remove your creatures and they just drop down the Chimera and sometimes you're able to deal all this damage to your opponent's face. And yeah, you could probably kill them in one turn, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, it's just not necessary. Your flame destroyer are just as good, so you you know you're trying to save yourself some vials. The flame destroyer is just as good, and they're not legendaries. It's just I don't know, it's not gimmicky, but it can work. But you have better options, or you can. Your other option is the flame destroyer, which is not a legendary, and you know it's easier to craft. The king elephant is uh, not good. It's no bueno, sir. Is 10 play points, it's too expensive. Uh, Roach decks are usually able to close out the game before turn 10, and uh, yeah, it's too slow for me. I don't like this. It's just a minion with a big stats that can ignore a ward, but you know, I don't know. It, even if you hit your opponent for 10 on turn 10, you know, afterwards, what, they, what are they gonna do? I guess they're gonna kill this. Unless you have multiple copies of this and you're running a really slow deck, you might you're better off playing Roach. Roach is usually able to defeat your opponent before turn ten, uh, or if not, play some Wolf co combos where you smack him in the face with some powerful spells. But anyways, that's just my opinion there. The Python, this guy is yeah, I don't like this. It's too slow. It doesn't do anything. The turn that is played. Um. You know, in turn 10 for Dragon, you have a much better option. You can drop your bottom mid, you can combo them through. You can hit them really hard with Genesis Dragon or set up something even better than this. So yeah, this, whole, this is a weak card. Probably good in Arena, maybe. Not even, you're probably going to deck yourself out. Ah, anyways. Yeah, that's just my opinion. This expansion, we have probably just five really good legendaries. The, ones, yeah, the rest are just either not good enough or they're just not unplayable I guess like this male alliteration and and see for example this python this is gross those cards are not interesting or good at all um so yeah we have five we have the prime dragon keeper Medusa Cassiopeia Aether of the White Wings and Jarmunga those are the ones I really recommend getting these are pretty good legendaries but um, anyways, yeah, that was just it. I wanted to talk about those legendaries just to let you guys know, you know, anybody who's missing out or isn't sure yet or just came to, to the, the expansion a little late. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave some comments and tell me your opinions. On, if I was wrong on some of them or maybe I overlooked something. But other than that, yeah, it's mighty. I'm out. Peace. Hope you enjoyed.